Hey, welcome back. So Anthropic has literally just open sourced their new model context protocol, and it is a game changer because what it's going to allow you to do is easily connect up AI assistants such as Claude to your own systems through this protocol. And the companies that are involved in this are insane. It is literally everybody from Zed and Replit to Block and Apollo. So the ability to connect up your data, your APIs, two large language models is really the problem that they're trying to solve. And what they have open sourced is super cool. They've not only open sourced the protocol, but they've open sourced some decent SDKs to connect up your system. So they have a Python SDK, a TypeScript SDK. They've got great examples for things like being able to connect up to Slack, to be able to make commits on GitHub. There is some awesome examples. And I really think this is a proper game changer. And I think this is something that the open source community can really really get behind. So today, I'm going to give a quick overview, a first look at the model context protocol, and then I'm going to just run through the quick start guide on Anthropic to show you how to get started. So I think the first thing to get started is you can go to modelcontextprotocol.io. There is a really great getting started guide, as, as I said there. And the simplest thing to do is just click on the quick start, which gives a good overview of how it works. So if you look here for a second, you see it's actually very, very simple. You have this idea of an MCP host, which is your client application application and today they are providing Claude Desktop as a client application. So I'm going to show you how you can connect Claude Desktop up to a local server that we're going to build very, very quickly. But of course, you can create any amount of servers that these clients can create. And that's everything from something like hosting a SQLite file. It could be Postgres. It could be a commerce server. Any data that you want to be able to host locally and connect up to your client you are going to be able to do it via this protocol. Now, I'm going to show you how that works today with their quick start sample application on the desktop, but you can imagine taking this up into the cloud and running this in your Kubernetes servers or your existing REST services. I think that's probably the game changer. I think this is going to be the sort of API ecosystem, microservice ecosystem that we've been looking for uh, in the world of large language models. And I think this is really going to uh, help the agent ecosystem. So as you see in the examples here, you can have like MCP server A, B, and C. We'll, we'll create one very, very quickly. But not only can they access local data that's running on your machine, but they can also call out to the internet as well. So it can act as a sort of proxy service. And I, honestly, I think this is the game changer. So very quickly, there's a few things that you can do to get started. As I said, you can follow the quick start guide yourself, but we're going to run through this super, super quickly. So to get started, what we are going to do is we're going to create a SQLite database where we're going to have a products table and a list of products and their prices. And then we're going to serve up those products and prices via the large language model. But the key thing is that SQLite database is going to be served up from our MCP server. Now, I'm just going to use the out of the box example server. Later on in a, a future deep dive, we'll be able to create more detailed REST servers, etc. But but to get started, super simple. I've got SQLite installed on my machine. And to create the database, I just need to type in SQLite 3 uh, and then give the name of the database. In this case, it's going to be TestDB. And therefore, I am now in the CLI for SQLite. Now, obviously, I need to be able to create my products table. So I'm going to do that by doing a create table uh, products. I'm going to have a integer uh, primary key there. It's just going to be an auto increment field. I'm going to have the product name. and I'm going to have the price. And the price is obviously Obviously, going to be a real number or a float. Uh, I'm going to run that for a second, and I have now uh, created my table. Now, I obviously need to insert some data into the table. And then again, to do that, I'm just going to run a simple insert. So insert into products, name, price, and then values. Again, this is the example from the quick start. You're going to be able to do that yourself. You can put your own data. If you want to put NFL football players or something like that, you are going to be able to do that. College players, soccer ball players, whatever you want uh, within that, or put in your own data. But in this case, it's going to have things like widgets, wireless earbuds, etc. And again, this is going to be a game changer for your e-commerce. So I'm just going to run that. And then, of course, if I want to see that everything is OK, I could do a select star from products. Um, and then I'm going to see here is my inserted product list. As I said before, if I come into the quick start for a second, you can see this is the exact sample that is in there. But I'm just going to show you how this all works. So we are going to quit that. And of course, if I want to, I can just open up the database again by saying SQLite 3 test DB. I'm back up and open. And I could do a select star from products. 
And then as you can see, my database is there and saved. So I have got my database. I'm just gonna quit out of here for a second. The next thing I really need is a client. I could create a client via the quick start, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download Cloud Desktop so that we have a good example. So if you were, so if you were to go to Claude AI and forward slash at download, you are gonna see that Claude for desktop is there and it's available for Mac, it's available for Windows. So you can just go and download that and then install that. I'm not gonna go through how that works. It's just a simple click, click, click and point. Once you are signed in there, you can open up Claude Desktop um, from your machine. And of course, Claude Desktop just allows you to be able to talk to Air Claude at any point. So I can just say hello, and that is gonna to talk to Air Claude Sona and give a response. Now, I am not talking to any uh, of my local systems at the moment. I am just chatting with Claude over the internet. Now, obviously what I wanna be able to do is I wanna configure Claude to be able to talk to the uh, SQLite database that I just created uh, in a second. So to do that, I'm gonna go to my CD users and I'm gonna go to uh, my username. So it will be whatever your username is. And I'm gonna go into the library folder uh, forward slash application support. And then there is the cloud directory within there. So once I'm in there, we can do an LS. And the thing that I am gonna need is a cloud underscore desktop underscore config.json. So I can do a touch cloud uh, underscore desktop uh, underscore config.json and that will create that for me if it doesn't exist already. Uh, so if you want to, you can open up with your favorite text editor. So if you're into something like Vim, you can open up and do it within there. So I'm gonna open it up in VS Code. So I'm just gonna do code cloud desktop config.json. And then I'm just gonna paste in this piece of config. The important thing is there is uh, an attribute here called MCP servers. And then as you can see, I've got something here called SQLite. So I can have lots of lots of uh, servers that I can run locally on my machine. Again, and then Claude will be able to figure that out for itself. In this case, you can see the for the SQLite server, I have got a, uh, execute the command called UVX. If you don't know what UVX is, it's basically a package manager for Python, um, which is effectively being rebuilt in Rust. So it's kind of like pip. Um, and then I'm gonna pass through the arguments, which in this case is uh, a server called MCP server dash uh, SQLite. Now MCP dash server dash SQLite is one of the pre-built examples by Claude. And again, there's lots of cool examples in the GitHub, and I'm gonna show you that in a second. I'm gonna pass in my DB path as an argument. So in this case, it's gonna be the folder that we just created. So in this case, users Christopher Hay, uh, Chris Source, MCP play, hello MCP test DB. So it's the location of the database that we just um, created. So if I just do PWD here, you can see it's exactly uh, this folder there with the location of the database. And again, in the future, if you are going to go and create your own application, your own server, maybe not using the template that Claude provides, then you would put your application in here, the argument of what you would want UVX to call, or you can call it directly from within this JSON file. If you haven't got UVX already installed, it's pretty simple. You can just install it with uh, Brew and UVX and I get where you can go read it up and uh, learn more about that. So all I now need to do is just open Claude desktop back up again and then I'm gonna be able to interact with it. So I can actually just type in something super simple such as what SQLite databases are available. And you can see here, Claude's pretty smart, and then it's gonna check, and then it says, let me check what tables are available in the SQLite database. It's recognized from the JSON, I've got a thing called SQLite, and then it's uh, allow tool from SQLite. So run list tables from SQLite. So it's, it's already permissioned. So I'm gonna say allow for this chat. And then it says, I see there is one table called products. I'm gonna allow it for this chat and it comes back. So that's pretty cool. And it's listing out all of the uh, prompts there. So if I now say something like, uh, give me a list of all products and prices from the database. Actually, let's make it a bit more fun. Let's say the uh, list of the top five products and prices from the database ordered by most expensive item. Again, we'll say allow, and you can see there it's generated a SQL query and it's came back with mini drone, smartwatch, etc keyboard. And then of course, this is the really cool thing, because remember I'm working with Claude here, I'm just gonna say visualize this in 
a chart. And again, we're gonna use the power of Claude and then it's gonna go and create a bar chart here. So it's created some React code here, put in mini drone smart code, blah, blah, blah. It's generated out uh, the, the, uh, the UI and there's my chart. This is super, super cool. So if we come back to this diagram for a second, so on the left-hand side here is MCP host. So in the example I just showed, that would have been a Claude Desktop, but it doesn't need to just be Claude Desktop, right? It could be VS Code, and that's where those uh, early adopter partnerships come in. So, you know, you saw that uh, Zed was in there, you saw that things like Bolt was in there, and then Codium, et cetera. Um, they are gonna be the MCP hosts in the future. So it could be any application run locally. This is gonna be a killer use case for AI coding assistance, but it's not just gonna be for AI coding assistance. It's gonna be any application that runs on your machine, but it's not limited to that either. And again, think about the sort of uh, Kubernetes microservices example and your applications being able to connect up. This is gonna be an absolute killer in the cloud space. Now, in, in this particular example, MCP Server A, that happened to be um, the product service, the SQLite service that we were running there. But of course, um, using the Python SDK or the TypeScript SDK, you're gonna be able to create whatever types of service that you want. Now, the protocol is limited to kind of from the host uh, to local at the moment only, so you can only access things in your, your local machine. But of course, you can create a proxy server that co connects out to a third-party web application. So, you know, if you've got a third-party REST API that you wanna connect to, you can just create a proxy service. This is gonna be absolutely killer here. Um, Again, so if you wanna go and check out a little bit more details, you can go and have a look at the TypeScript SDK or the Python SDK, and it'll show you uh, how to create clients and how to create service. Again, I'll probably do a deep dive at some point and we'll really get into uh, the examples. What is my favorite part here though, is if we click on example service for a second, some of the pre-built examples are really killer and it's kind of worth looking at this. So you can kind of see here that there's a file system uh, server, which allows you to access your local files, etc. GitHub, so that's gonna be allow you to connect to your repositories, submit PRs, get data from there. Google Drive, Postgres, Slack, so you can um, interact with your Slack messages, etc. Memory, so there's a uh, graph database behind that as well, so that you can then start to build up knowledge about a person, etc. Puppeteer for web scraping, Google Maps, etc. Brave for search. Honestly, I think the open source ecosystem is gonna go wild and we are gonna get a ton of these different servers. And I think this is gonna be the protocol of the future. Anyway, this is a bit of a first look. Hopefully this was useful. As you can see, it's pretty easy to get started with. And in future videos, I'm gonna go into more details, but don't think of this as a uh, local service thing only. This is the start of agencies and service discovery. This is gonna be like the equivalent of microservices for the large language models. And this is gonna be the ecosystems that agents interact with. So it's gonna be absolutely killer. And I look forward to having a lot more fun with this. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.